Good morning, folks. It is uh, Monday today, and um, instead of doing the usual commentary um, during breakfast, we are already at uh, post-breakfast today. We uh, had come from the traditional Simbangabi masses that um, we attend. We've been trying to complete this novena, a nine-day novena, uh, to Our Lady and to the Christ Child. It's a traditional Filipino um, novena that we try to do every year. So it started on the 16th and uh, continues all the way to the eve of Christmas. But we're home now. We were there at 5 o'clock. The Mass was at 5 o'clock. So that's how we celebrate it here at St. Joseph's. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> well, today... Today the gospel is a very interesting uh, narration of how St. Joseph reacted to um, the situation, the condition of Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin, when she was found to be with child. And I'd like to comment uh, on the way that St. Joseph reacted to learning that the Virgin Mary was with child. So you would imagine uh, the confusion of St. Joseph. Right? He must have been terribly distraught, terribly confused, terribly um, um, uh, indescribably sad, perhaps, that the woman he loved so much, the woman that he was betrothed, to be married to, was found all of a sudden carrying a child that is not his own. And I could put myself in a situation where understanding St. Joseph, it must be one of the hardest things any man could go through. Right? The, the uh, realization that your wife-to-be, your fiancé, is carrying somebody else's child. But let us examine how St. Joseph reacted. Number one, St. Joseph reacted with a great deal of faith. Faith is, is the um, hallmark of St. Joseph's life from the very beginning. St. Joseph reacted with a lot of faith. I would imagine... Uh, I'm just trying to imagine St. Joseph before this scene of, of, uh, of Bethlehem, where St. Joseph, in his confusion, must have resorted to prayer, must have resorted to asserting his faith, must have resorted to banging heaven with, with an answer for why this is happening to him and to the woman he loved, Our Lady. Instead of getting angry at the situation and angry at Mary or doubting Our Lady, which I never think or imagine him to have done, St. Joseph, on the contrary, could have reacted precisely with more faith, with more piety, being more prayerful, asking God for clarity, rather than questioning God's uh, wisdom behind all of this. I imagine St. Joseph to be praying earnestly for clarity. Not because he doubted God, not because he refused to understand, but because precisely in his desire to believe Mary's story, to believe the, uh, the, um, the reality right before him, and to see it from God's perspective. To see it from God's perspective, St. Joseph at these very precise moments in his life must have been deep in prayer, must have engaged in a lot of discernment, a lot of soul searching, not out of doubt, but precisely in order to assert his faith, in order precisely to seek clarity from God as to where he is leading this marriage and this relationship he has with the Blessed Virgin. And you can see that he reacted out of love for Mary. He wanted to put Mary away, not because he wanted to separate with Mary and divorce with her. No, 
but because he wanted to shield Our Lady from any embarrassment that was sure to come because of the tradition of the Jews, right? It's, it's a shameful thing for, for a woman to be carrying somebody else's child. So out of love for Our Lady, he wanted to protect Mary's reputation and wanted her to you know to to well to con well if he can conceal it, things or or you know he doesn't know what to do <laughs> so he prayed i'd like to think he prayed he prayed he prayed a lot and god answered his prayer by sending an angel in a dream to him to clarify what it is that was happening to mary and to assure him that this child is indeed the child of god that it is not from any just any other man that it is the child of God and the one that Mary is uh, bearing inside of her is indeed the Emmanuel the one who was to come the son of God um, it, th this is uh, something that we have to learn a lot from this particular gospel today is something all of us especially men <laughs> especially we men have to learn Plenty of lessons of faith, docility, obedience to the will of God. This is what this gospel reminds us of today. And let us be mindful of these very same virtues that God demands of every man. Every man, particularly those of us who are married and with families and are beset with, uh, with a big responsibility of uh, providing for our families, protecting our families, guiding our families in faith, guiding our families in the path to heaven, guiding our families in this journey to through earth towards heaven. We have to employ plenty of faith. The same faith that St. Joseph had in the providence of God. The same faith, the same docility, and reacting with obedience to the will of God. These are some of the things we can consider, folks, in this uh, last stretch in the Advent season uh, as we prepare ourselves for the coming of our Lord at Christmas. We have one week, one week, and we could perhaps think about St. Joseph and, and hell, ask St. Joseph to accompany us to accompany us as we approach Christmas in this last stretch of Advent, to be with us, to be with us, and accompany us in our spiritual life, in our family life, in our community life. Let St. Joseph be there to accompany us in this journey. Okay, folks, that's it. That's it for us. I hope you all have a good day. And for those of you around the world, I could see some of you here, some of my friends from other countries, parts of the world listening to us. Uh, hi, Lito, <laughs> if you're still there. Uh, good night. Good night to the rest of you. And we hope to see you again tomorrow. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.